Topic 6.4 is focused on the respiratory system. As I am sure you can guess, the respiratory system is comprised of many organs that work together to carry out the process of breathing. While breathing is a task that we forget about unless we just ran a marathon, it is absolutely essential to our survival. Let's dive into the respiratory system to understand just how important these structures are and learn about how they work. Let's first take a look at the structure of the respiratory system. Air moves into our lungs from a tube connected to our mouth and nose called the trachea. This tube is for air and only air. If you ever get liquid into your trachea, you usually spend the next minute or so coughing very hard to get it out. Food and liquid go down the esophagus and breathed air moves through the trachea. The end of the trachea splits into two smaller tubes that move air to the right and left lung. These tubes are called the right and left bronchi. After that, each bronchus splits into smaller tubes called bronchioles. These continue to split until they are small enough to attach to alveoli, which are these little circular structures that sit at the end of the bronchioles. In addition to these structures, there are two very important muscles that help the system function. The muscles are the intercostal muscles, located between the ribs, and the diaphragm, located underneath the lungs. These two muscles, along with a few others, help the lungs expand and contract to enable breathing. One of the main functions of the respiratory system is to support ventilation between the body and the outside air. The concentration of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the air are different than the concentrations within the body. Because of this concentration gradient, we are able to exchange these gases between our lungs and the outside air that we take in. Let's take a look at this image. The outside air that we breathe in has a high amount of oxygen and low amount of carbon dioxide. When we send blood to our lungs through the pulmonary artery, there is a low concentration of oxygen and a higher concentration of carbon dioxide in the blood compared to the outside air. When air enters the alveoli, the surrounding capillary allows for these gases to be exchanged. As always, molecules naturally move from a high concentration to a low concentration without energy. Due to these differences, oxygen will move into the capillary and carbon dioxide will exit the capillary and move into the outside air. No energy required. This reoxygenated blood leaves the lungs through the pulmonary veins, which bring it back to the left atrium. We know that inspiration, or breathing in, means that air moves into our lungs. But how does this actually happen? The basic idea behind air movement in the respiratory system involves a gradient. Unlike the normal gradients we see within cells, this gradient is based on air pressure and volume. Let's review that molecules, including gases, naturally move from a high to low concentration, or in this case, high to low pressure. Let's do a little experiment. Will I be able to breathe if I don't change the volume of my lungs while sitting at rest with my airway open? The answer, no. Without any movement, the air pressure inside of my lungs is equal to the air pressure in the atmosphere. This means that air is not actively moving at a pace to continuously supply my blood with oxygen. If I were to stay like this, it would not be good. In order to bring air into my lungs, I have to decrease the inside pressure compared to the atmosphere. I do this by flexing two muscles, the external intercostal muscles and the diaphragm. Doing this rapidly increases the volume in my lungs, which lowers the pressure. Once I create this pressure difference, air will naturally move from a high pressure to a low pressure, meaning air will move into the lungs. This process is called inspiration or inhalation. With all of this air now inside our lungs, we can then decrease the volume of our lungs by flexing our abdominal muscles and internal intercostal muscles, which greatly increase the pressure. At this point, the pressure inside our lungs becomes greater than the pressure in the atmosphere, meaning air will move out. This process is called expiration or exhalation. Notice that there are four main muscles that work together to manage breathing. Two for inhalation and two others for exhalation. The body needs two sets of muscles because muscles can only pull in one direction. Muscles that work opposite of one another, like these, are called antagonistic muscles. When we inhale air, it fills up these circular structures in our lungs called alveoli. Our alveoli are specially designed to support gas exchange, 
as they are surrounded by capillaries for O2 to be taken in and CO2 to be removed. Alveoli are made out of two different types of cells called type 1 and type 2 pneumocytes. Type 1 pneumocytes are long and thin and provide a surface between the outside air and the capillaries for both oxygen and carbon dioxide to be exchanged. Type 2 pneumocytes are short and round. These cells secrete surfactant into the water that lines the inside of the alveoli. Surfactant is used to equal out the pressure of each alveolus, even if they are different sizes. A greater amount of surfactant will be secreted in smaller alveoli compared to larger alveoli, which greatly decreases the surface tension of the water lining the pneumocytes. This ensures that each alveolus inflates equally by giving different sizes the same pressure. Without this surfactant, the smaller alveoli would collapse due to pressure differences, which would result in less total oxygen intake. If we are talking about lungs, we have to talk about lung cancer. Lung cancer describes uncontrolled growth of lung cells and is due to many factors. At this point, we should all be aware of the fact that smoking cigarettes greatly increases your risk of lung cancer. But that is not the only cause. Other causes include disease, family genetic history, aging, exposure to radiation, pollution, asbestos, and secondhand smoke. Having a tumor growing in your lung can lead to many complications. Most critically, it can impact the normal function of lung tissues, reducing oxygen intake to the body. Additionally, if the cancer metastasizes, it can spread to other organs and cause other problems in different body systems. Another common lung condition is emphysema. Patients who suffer from this condition have damaged their alveolar cells, which leads to the development of large holes in the lungs where the healthy cells used to be. This greatly lowers the amount of surface area available for gas exchange, which can lead to shortness of breath and greatly increases susceptibility to chest infections. The major cause of emphysema is smoking.